Now, here's an interesting short story, a role reversal situation where a gal who's 32, she's been engaged to her fiance for two years, and they're all set to be married pretty soon. But the problem is she wants to have a prenup signed and her guy she's marrying won't do it. He's stalling. And why is she insistent on this uh, prenup being signed? Because she's worked very hard to build up a a six-figure net worth. Okay, she's 32, so, you know, she's early on in this whole thing. And she doesn't want to potentially lose her money if things go down, go south. How interesting. Because overwhelmingly, it's always the guy, let's be honest here, that wants to lead the charge in a prenup, protect what he's worked so hard to have thus far in life. And it's always the gal that drags things out, creates drama. So I thought it'd be funny to go over this one here. And not to mention, there's issues with his family as well that could be taking advantage of her. Title. My fiancé, a 34-year-old male, won't sign our prenup, which was initially agreed upon and drafted two years ago. This guy has been stalling for two years. Give him credit, this guy's pretty freaking slick. What is with this chick? Is she like 400 pounds? Looks like the elephant lady, therefore she's putting up with this, you know? Seriously. Believe me, if she was a good-looking gal and had a lot of options, I, I, I think this guy would have been toast a long time ago. Uh, I've been with my fiancé for almost five years now, engaged for one and a half years. We're an interracial couple, me being from Canada and he from India. I finally have a six-figure net worth, uh, half of which I've made since we started dating. He was only a few. Th- he only has a few thousand in savings. Okay, a few thousand in savings total, and she's got herself a six-figure, you know, net worth. You know, so she's definitely doing things right and moving up. Since our relationship, we've always had similar incomes, with him currently making more. I am generally safer with my money, and he has lost a lot on his poor investments. He makes more, but he's pissed it away on being bad with money and probably on bad investments. He's probably very reckless with his money, impatient, that type of thing. He has always planned to bring over his parents from India, who I met there recently, to live with us or nearby. Uh, they're coming to live with you. I hate to break it to you, honey. I was uncomfortable with this idea initially early on in our relationship. After meeting them, I feel more flexible about this because we all got along fine while staying at their house for a few weeks. Anybody can put on a show for a few weeks thinking, hey, this is our meal ticket in the United States. Come on here. We all realize that I will be the one to pay the down payment for our first home as I'm the only one with any savings. I will likely be equally financially responsible for his parents because he can't afford to provide for them by himself. And their only wealth is in their house, which they intend to keep. This is a terrible deal. Again, does she weigh 400 pounds look like the elephant lady? Because unless... That's the only way I can think of this. She would tolerate this crap. This is an awful deal for her. Because you know she's going to be paying for the parents. She's not going to be making a... He's not going to help towards the down payment of the house because he doesn't have any money. Now, you do find out later on that he sends money back home to them, but still. Two years ago, pre-engagement, I told that my then-boyfriend that I'd like us to, to have a cohabitation agreement because we were coming up on two years living together. This will also act as our prenup. If we were to get married, I asked him if he'd be okay with that, and he said yes. I included him in the drafts since he didn't want to get his own lawyer. Dumbass. When I gave the contract him to read and sign, he wouldn't sign. Well, that's when you say, well... We've been having a great time at all, and I want to move forward in life with you, but if you're not going to do this, then I just can't do that and walk away. She would do what I tell the guys to do, because I don't want anybody to be screwed over, and this guy's clearly screwing her over. Fast forward two years, and it still isn't signed. I tried explaining how it's important to me to protect myself, especially since I will be contributing most financially, to provide for us all. I am happy for him to get a lawyer and make amendments. I just want to know that in the worst case scenario, I will continue to be financially responsible for all of them or lose more than my fair share because he cannot support his parents. So you can see why guys, so many guys want prenups in case shit happens. So it's amusing to see this gal be on the other, on the other side of this where the guy is jerking her around and taking advantage of her. And he is. And uh, her, you know, to say, hey, I don't want to get screwed over here. Now can the gals get this, where we're coming from? But they don't care because they want to benefit from it. He knows I have witnessed my, many divorces, including my own parents. I'm a realist and want to be responsible. He feels like I don't trust him and that I must not truly love him if I'm thinking of finances. He's saying what the chicks say. 
I understand that our opinions on this are somewhat cultural, but I think it's unfair for me to be flexible and willing to take on all this without any security net if things go south. I don't blame her. You know, if this was a female relative of mine, I would be telling her exactly what I think, that it's a bad deal. I was very resentful and anxious after the failed attempts I made at him signing and discussing it. I always left the conversation feeling selfish and immoral. I eventually gave up and tried to let it go. So in other words, he gaslit you, made you feel like you were the bad guy here. You don't love me, saying it and like that, you know? No. Come on here. We're two months away from our wedding now, and some of, the, of this worry and resentment is resurfacing. What would you suggest doing to this situation? He is otherwise a wonderful, kind man, and I do love him. Or maybe she isn't some 400-pound hippopotamus or elephant lady, and maybe he's just a Indian chatter Tyrone. I'm sure at most, let's be honest for, let's be honest here, most uh, Indian guys have a bad rap for being absolutely fucking clueless of women and, you know, doing what they do in Bollywood movies and all that, but ever so often you can have uh, probably a few Indian chatter Tyrones. I don't know what the Indian version of chatter Tyrone, any, any of you guys can, you guys can speculate in the comments section, Indian chatter Tyrone names, but anyhow, he might be one of them and he's getting this gal who maybe isn't 400 pounds wrapped around his finger. I don't know. Now she updates. She says, well, I did not expect so many responses. Thank you. To clarify, we do currently split everything 50-50 and will continue to do so. So they're splitting things 50-50 in the bills. Okay. The exception being the down payment and any potential costs he and his parents can't cover, which I know is unfair. Your goddamn right's unfair. But his argument is that we would save on child care. Yes, he sends part of his salary home to his parents. Okay, that's, that's nice that he does that. I'll give him that, but still... The ones really benefiting are the parents. His parents would rent out part of their house in India and keep the other half. They would they would they could contribute this, but it won't cover too much here. They both intend on getting part-time jobs here. Sure. Ideally, they would be an, it'd be an in-law suite or duplex. I've made it clear that I don't want to share the same four walls when they are healthy enough to look after themselves. But who knows what we'll be able to afford? Prices in our city are insane. Good luck. You know, I don't see as many duplexes around nowadays. You know, my house that I bought specifically for this reason has a cottage. I love it because I had family here a couple times and they stayed in the cottage away from the main house. But they're rare down here, you know. She says, yes, I meant six figures net worth. Uh, also, they are not traditional as most families in India. Uh, they ensure their daughters receive some the exact same education as my partner and they have similar jobs there. He's very generous when he when he can be. Uh, he funded our trip to India. Well, he's investing in the future, having you pay for things. I, I can't help but be, you know, skeptical here. I'm aware at this point that the cohab prenup would likely be considered invalid anyway, because signing dates are so different, and we're too close to the wedding. I don't know what else to do in that regard. In my province, he is already entitled to half of what I've made during the relationship, simply because we lived together for two years. So, already she's on the hook for him because they were living together because she's in Canada and they're, and they're dumbass Canadian laws. I didn't know about this until a year and a half in, hence the request for a cohab agreement at the time. If he had signed on time, I, I would have been protected in time. I didn't want to force him with a deadline because of the coercion factor. Oh my, coercion. Yep, half of the resentment is him go get going back on his word, but this is only a situation in five years where that's happened. So yeah, the situation is a bit more nuanced, and I'm already slightly screwed if we call off the wedding. Are there any other ways to protect myself? Honey, you paint yourself into a corner. The only advice I could give, like say this was a female relative of mine who was dumb enough to get in this situation, I'd say this, we ain't getting married. End of story. We're going to get prenups that have the proper dates on them, and you're going to sign it. I'm sorry, I have to walk away. End of story. That, that's what I would recommend to a female relative or someone that a, a female is close to. But anyhow, that's that's what she can do. But if she goes along with this, I think she's going to be royally taken advantage of. And I don't want anybody to be taken advantage of. But I am doing this because I find it amusing that <laughs> after countless stories I've done, and countless stories you all have heard, and maybe you've experienced this yourselves, with insisting on the prenup, it's always the guys that are painted as the villains, and the women are like, you don't love me, you don't trust me, that type of shit. But, but here, she, a, a gal that's building up her net worth, 
has some assets, worked hard for it, and she doesn't want to get screwed over, even though she's already gotten screwed over. So that'd be a good one here, guys, just to show you, you know, it happens to the gals too. And uh, maybe some, some gals that listen to this can understand where we're coming from here. So I wish her the best. I hope she makes the right decision.